Hey there, everybody. John here uh, from Make Math Moments, and I'm uh, coming to you live on Facebook. Uh, and uh, I, one thing I want to do to get out of the way is if you have not subscribed uh, over on YouTube, get over on YouTube because this video will be posted over there, and then you'll be notified when we go live. We're doing a lot more live videos on YouTube, but also here on Facebook. In this particular video, we are talking about how to sneak in factoring. Factoring is one of the biggest, uh, you know, um, skills that high school math teachers are going to say, like, I want my students to be great at factoring trinomials. And it kind of trickles down to say, like, grade eight, we need to get them ready to do that. And so I want to show you in this video how I sneak in factoring without actually, like, officially saying I'm doing a lesson on factoring. And uh, this actually, this post is really coming from uh, a post uh, uh, from in our uh in our um, membership area, our academy membership, one of our new uh, members posted something about like how do you how do you get into factoring and teaching that and what what where do you focus? So I wanted to bring that to the limelight here, and I want to show you what I am doing in my class to kind of as I said sneak in factoring, and uh, I'm just going to go uh, full screen here for you for a sec and show you that I've got a post over on my website, MrOrIsAGeek.com, and I sneak in factoring before we even teach factoring. And so what I do is and this also has to be built up with algebra tiles in the sense that you've done some collecting like terms, you've talked about what an algebra tile is and used it to, uh, as an extension of the area model when you're doing multiplying and uh, thinking about like, and one thing that you have to do in advance before you sneak factoring in is explain, hey, if I've got this one by one square, the lengths are one by one. That creates an area of one. So the one inside this this square in, in algebra tiles represents the area of one square unit. That's why we can use them as counters, like integer tiles. Uh, the the length of x here, like the the x algebra tile, you want to explain to your students that that the area is capturing by this x units. Like if we don't know this length, this length is uh, x units long, and this length here is one unit long, and x length times one length is still x. So it's like x times one is still x. And that there, you also see that this one lines up with this one. And so why I sneak this in is I, I give my, my students at the beginning of class, very early, before I even wanna talk about factoring, is I sneak in factoring by saying, hey, I, I, I want you to use these tiles, put these tiles on your desk, or if you're uh, like like me and I've got some digital tiles or you're teaching remotely, then you can say, hey, share them with the this this braining camp, which is a great tool. You can say, hey, build, you know, just put these tiles on your desk, uh, on your workspace. And all I want you to do uh, is just make a rectangle. Just make one rectangle. Make it make it look like a full length and a width, fill in this full area of a rectangle, just make one. And when that, like I do that for uh, just the first warm up of a class, like we'll make a rectangle and that will be it. And then we'll, next day we'll make a different rectangle and the next day we'll make a different rectangle and the next day we'll make a different rectangle. And so what's gonna happen here is students are making rectangles and actually they're factoring. And as long as you kind of pull some tidbits out of there as they go. So for example, uh, in this particular one, I might say, hey, go ahead, put an X squared tile, uh, put five X tiles and put a single, uh, six singles down on your workspace here. And all you wanna do here is make a rectangle. So students might say, okay, well, I might make a rectangle uh, and then I'm saying, okay, I'll put this one there and uh, we'll line that one up and we'll line this one up and we'll line all these ones up and they will quickly realize that if I just do that and then I start to line these ones up, uh, this doesn't work out perfectly. I, I better try a different arrangement. Okay, so that's not gonna work. Okay, so let's get, maybe I'll put one of these down here. I'll rotate this one and I'll put that down here. Oh, I'm starting to build a rectangle, but it's not perfect yet. Okay, okay, I built a rectangle there, but I need to use all these tiles. And so, okay, well, let me, let me put one there. Okay, no, I still got these two left. Okay, let me, You'll listen to your students as they build these rectangles and they'll start to make this shape. And then finally, they will end up with a rectangle that uses these exact tiles. 
Beautiful, beautiful. And then you can say, hey, awesome job. Um, could you just, by the way, uh, in this puzzle, right? This is just a puzzle that we're doing a warm up with. Could you just write the dimensions of that rectangle? Like what would the dimensions of that rectangle be that you made? Uh, and students will start to see that, okay, well, if I'm gonna write the dimensions, uh, this area was X squared, so this length is X, and this length was X, all right, because it's X squared, and this length was one and one and one, right? It's one, 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 uh, that length is one, one, one. So this whole length is X and then three, or X plus three. This whole length is X plus three, and this length is one, and this length is one. This whole length is, uh, that's two, so X plus two more is X plus two. So this whole area uh, is x squared plus five x plus six covers an area, but its length is x plus three and its width is x plus two. And so all of a sudden you could say, you know what, the area written, written length and width wise, then this area would be an x plus two times an x plus three. And that's it, that's all you have to say. That, that is our warm up, guys. Thanks very much. Um, let's move on. Let's do what we're gonna do today on something else, like a whole different topic. Just start with sneaking that in. And then as uh, you, you say, sneak that one in, you build those and you sneak a different one in. So you could say the next day, it's like X squared plus six, X plus eight, have them build a rectangle. Uh, they built a rectangle, then they can write the dimensions. And then this, this is the beautiful part. You can start to piece together and listen to strategies that your students are gonna take. And you don't have to say what, what is the best orientation. They're gonna start to see what, how fast they can build these rectangles. And they're gonna start to put together like, okay, I need to have a group of two by two here. And that means I have to even, you know, distribute the X's on this side this way. They will start to see the connection between the last term and the middle term and how that rule comes out. Like normally when I taught for so many years, I would say, okay, you gotta do it this way, right? You're gonna multiply two numbers that multiply to this and add to this number. Well, let them discover it by just sneaking it in with little warm-ups, just like you know, I'm doing here with algebra tiles. And then, and then you can say, well, you know what? Let's not build a rectangle anymore. Let's let's build a square. And now we're into like starting to sneak in uh, completing the square. Because if you can complete a square, if you can make that square, your dimensions are the same. And so you can sneak in uh, types where the trinomial where you have A is not equal to one. And so you've got to build a rectangle still. The same thing is true, building a rectangle. And students are gonna say, hey, if I can build a rectangle, I can factor. And that's the goal, right? Like we wanna be able to be factoring well. So this is the way I start with factoring is just building rectangles. Here's an example here on this blog post where I said, hey, here's, build me a square. And kids are like, well, I can't build a square with exactly those tiles. And then you say, wait a minute. Yes, I can build a square. I can almost build a square because it's got to be symmetric, but I actually need a couple more tiles to fit in there. And that's our completing the square. I could bring in its opposite and then I can make a perfect square, but I got some left over and I've just converted from standard form to the vertex form of a quadratic relation. And you can then expand that. And this is to coefficients of ugly coefficients or fractional coefficients, or you could have fractional values in your perfect square. Like this is the way I sneak in factoring and then I sneak in completing the square. And when I did this, I had less students trying to memorize how to factor the different types. And I had less students trying to memorize that process of completing the square is, is because they are visualizing in their heads the rectangles and the dimensions of the rectangles. And then they're also visualizing the squares when it's time to complete the square. So I highly recommend uh, that you try to sneak in factoring by just doing some early warmups in your course before you're ready to talk about factoring. And then when it's a lesson on factoring, it's over because you've already built the building blocks for it. Highly recommend Algebra Tiles. If you're teaching remotely, check out Braining Camp. And uh, that's gonna end it for me. But before you uh, go, I want to uh, point to you uh, that uh, Kyle Pierce and I from Make Math Moments, we've got a four part video series that's for free. It's like an email course. You sign up and every day we're gonna send you a video about how to build resilient problem solvers. That's, uh, that's something we've been putting together and have put together. It uh, helps you uh, the ins and outs of what goes into building resilient problem solvers. And this, hey, this technique with 
sneaking and factoring fits right in to the curiosity path that we talk about in that video series. So definitely check that out. And also uh, hit subscribe over on YouTube and uh, hit the bell here on Facebook to get notified anytime we go live. That's it for me, John uh, from Make Math Moments. I will see you later.